but I did like the uh, original Tomb Raider movies. They weren't oh, half bad. The, um, the Angelina Jolie ones. Yes. Those were kind of fun. Now, yeah, those kind of fun. I, I played the games at that age. I yeah. watched the movies when they came out. So whatever age I was, mm-hmm. they captured it pretty well. She went on an adventure. She had to do all these obstacles and take care of the bad guys. Hello and welcome to level 98 of the Thoughts and Players podcast, the gaming podcast with both takes and no strings attached. I am Jeremy here, of course, with my compadre, David. What up? How are you doing this fine evening, sir? Well, I am doing a lot better than I was the past couple of days. Yeah, I was sick. Body aching, felt like I hit by a truck, 102 fever for over 20 hours. Uh, for those watching, I uh, have a nice little cut on my forehead from blacking out, trying to go to the bathroom, mm-hmm. and uh, hit the windowsill with my face. But I'm doing better, doing better. How about you? Uh, I am doing okay. You know, that cut doesn't look as bad, so I was going to say, you know what? Strong windowsill, stronger face. Yeah, both hardly damaged. There you go. That's what you want. <laughs> That's the ideal. That is the ideal scenario that comes from that. Uh, well, glad again, glad you're feeling better. Yes, um, thank you. Whatever it was that was attacking you has been thwarted and is no more. Yeah. It uh, came, beat the crap out of me, and then left. Yeah. Yeah. I got to like, like he owed it money, huh? Yeah, I love much. that expression. I, I, lo- I apparently owed a lot of money. Yeah. I love a very old school expression. Oh, it beat you like you owe your money. And it's like, great. That, that was <laughs> happening a lot back in the day. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, chickens, ducks, and hens, we welcome you into this level of the pod. Looking forward to it. We got some a couple of really great topics. Um, but before we get to those topics, we're going to talk about the games that we've been playing. This is how we start everything. Um I can volunteer to go first on this. Yeah, go ahead. So I mentioned before in the previous episode that I've been playing a little bit of Power World and I've been playing a little bit of Madden 23, a little bit of the intriguing and a little bit of the dumb. I am happy to say that I am no longer playing Madden 23 um, because I'm not an idiot. Okay, they're not going to (laughs) trick me with their tricks to get me to play it. Okay, I haven't been playing Madden 23. Instead, I played a little of Madden 24 because we came available... (laughs) On uh, on EA Play through you Game had Pass. us in the first half. So I just I tried it out to check and see if it had my it had, it had continued my save from when I did the trial before and did the review, mm-hmm. um and it it hadn't. So I want to experiment a little bit with that. the the main The main premise of my franchise is that I I was the in twenty three I was the Houston Texans in twenty four I'm the Arizona Cardinals. I like to take the bad teams, and for the Arizona Cardinals I traded away Kyler Murray for Justin Fields and the Chicago Bears so I could give that kid the chance he needs to, to to bring out his talent. The team sucks. I probably won't play it for long. I just played it a little bit to see how to see how it played. And it does play better to me in general than 23, but it's still terrible. Um and it doesn't give me a lot of hope for NCAA football 25, which is supposed to be coming out later this year. I think they're supposed to be doing a reveal trailer in June or July. It's one it's one of the most hyped games. Uh, everyone's been wanting NCAA football and everyone's going to want it until they get it and they play it. And then they're going to experience EA the way Madden people have experienced EA, I believe, unless they change, unless they've changed their ways. Um, but that's, that's the one game I've been playing. The other game that I p- finished playing and beat is Spider-Man Miles Morales. Really? Okay. That's right. That's right. I am walking in today with my black team swagger. Okay. All the swagger. Uh, I was able to beat it. It's a great story. It's a short game, obviously. It's maybe eight to ten hours. I might actually jump into it and uh, try to do 100% completion on it because it's fairly easy to do. The story was a little wonky in the end, not lengthwise, just how the story played out, but I did enjoy it. Miles Morales is a great character. The way they explore and examine Harlem uh, is is a great way to talk, like you know to 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 explore that area of New York that we don't get a lot of exposure to, um, and his 
mentee mentor relationship with Peter Parker is a really interesting and cool dynamic. Um, I really enjoyed my time with the game. It's a great game. Um, and so it was cool to hop back into that. I'm just like, you know what? Let me just let me just figure out how far I am, what I have to do. And I just figured that I would hop in one night and play a few more hours and then, you know, continue with the other. I just played it that whole night and just beat it. <laughs> so I just I just ran through it. I'm like, you know, how it happens sometimes. Yeah, I'm like, I might as well, you know, knock this out. First completed game of 2024. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's a nice little feather in the cap right there. We'll see how many I beat this year. I think I beat 10 or 12 games last year. And I don't know if that's up Dang. or down from my previous, but um, we'll see what it looks like. The trick is to play shorter games, but it just really depends. Um, but that's really all I've played was just a little bit of Madden 24 Mostly in, and I played Spider Man Miles Morales that one night, so that's pretty much w- what I've been playing. How about you? Um, before I say it, my only experience with Miles Morales has been the animated movies that he's in. Yeah, and those are also really good in my opinion They're because, great. again, I don't have any prior knowledge of him, so I don't know how well they are based off the comics and stuff. But from what I can tell, most of the reviews of the movie from just regular people like us is really good. Yeah. People really love those movies they had, and they even have, so obviously you can, it's like the first Spider-Man and like the second one that came out late last year, this one as well, there's different suits that you can buy, you know, you get activity tokens and tech parts and you can therefore acquire new suits and different things. And one of the suits they have, I think they have about, I want to say maybe 20 suits in total you can get. Um, a couple of them you can only get if you if you beat certain activities. One of them you can only get if you start a new game plus, which I'm definitely not going to do. And then the other ones you can buy. And one of the suits in that in that game is the Into the Spider Verse Miles Morales suit. So you can actually get the one that he wore in those movies, and that's really it looks cool. pretty cool. Yeah, it looks it looks really good. All the suits look great too. I I like that. That's see, it's stuff like that which makes me want to get a ps5 i'm like well then how much time am i really going to put into it though you know yeah i mean it's apparently hard. you might not sony's telling you that a ps6 is around right, the corner well, so who knows yeah might as well wait another like rate, rate this one might as well save it for a ps7 rate the rate it's going <laughs> i might be able to have enough cash by the time it comes out anyways the way right? everything's working yeah but uh what i've been playing is honestly just mostly uh apex i'm really liking the new season yeah you know it uh it feels really good um i still feel how i felt last week uh the armor change especially it really makes it feel more like a team game now yeah which you know is it's what it's always been but a lot of people don't make it feel that way sometimes but with the uh what are they the the medic group of people they mm-hmm. have a certain pill that they can open and it opens an extra drawer right and that gives you 100 armor to everybody you know and the uh assault class i think it's called the, the pills that they open they have their own whatever the assault pills and when they open their extra drawer everyone gets 100 points towards their armor you know, and and reviving, I think, is 150. I haven't been able to revive a lot because we usually either win the fights or just get mauled, yeah. you know, and uh, respawning people raises your armor. So there's there's a lot more effort in the teaming in the game. So I, I really like that. And uh, the my, my favorite map, Olympus, is back in rotation. So I will not complain there. Yeah, but that's mostly what I've been playing. I missed a lot of playing because of how sick I was. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. It's yeah. You know, it's interesting. Kind of like going back based like what we were saying last episode. Like I don't I don't play a lot of multiplayer games Mm -hmm. and I'm trying to think the last multiplayer FPS that I used to play like that I would play consistently all the time. Big Bear Josh would know this for sure. Um, is I believe it was bad if Battlefield either Bad Company or Bad Company Two. I played that wow. all the time, nonstop. Oh, it's yeah, it's been a minute. But I used to be a sniper in that, 
And it kind of reminds me because like back back in the day with Battlefield with those, it's it's not the same as much anymore. But back then, like people would actually select classes that would help you work as a team. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, people, it, but if you didn't really communicate or talk or anything, you didn't really know, it was more so just kind of based off of like seeing what people would select and then seeing how people performed as the class they were in. So if you're someone that's like, oh, I want to go around, I'll be the sniper for our team. But then if I hype, if I hop in and I'm a halfway decent sniper and I've got the sniper thing set, you're like, oh, he's got it. Let me go be something else that helps support the team. Let me choose the assault class or the engineer class or something like that. You know, um, that's kind of like my last reference for for in a multiplayer game, like trying to work cohesively as a unit towards a goal. Mm-hmm. Right. But besides that, it feels like most of the time in most FPSs, even if they are team based, it's pretty much everyone worried about their 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 KD and and how they can, you know, get all the accolades and be on the top of the leaderboard at the end of the match and different stuff like that. And I'm like, OK, I'm not I'm not really digging this, you know, then, you know, lag and, 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 and pings become more and more of an issue. and You're yeah. getting ripped off and stuff like that. And I'm like, I don't have the patience for some of these things. Um, I would say, you know what? That was the Battlefield 2. If I had to do more recent as far as when I would play competitively for a good bit, it was probably Titanfall 2 was probably the last one where I would log on. I would I would use I would play the game every once in a while just for the multiplayer. Right. Like besides that, never like I had I've I've played every Halo Mm -hmm. and I don't think I've played multiplayer Halo intensely really since Halo Reach. I'm like, I don't want to do this. Dang. I'm not, I'm not really cool with it. And it's actually, right. and Halo multiplayer actually plays more to what I like because it it's the, the, like your, whatever it is, your, your shots, whatever, however many shots it takes to kill you is a lot slower than other games. So mm-hmm. it would seem like, oh, it would work to your advantage, but it just doesn't really intrigue me that much. Uh, the Titanfall one was cool because, of course, you're running on buildings, you're jumping off buildings, you're yeah. jumping in, you're jumping on the Titans, and you're calling Titan. It's just complete pandemonium, and that's great. But um, yeah, even with that game, and that game too, it felt like teamwork was a little bit important to accomplishing the goal. So yeah, but a lot like like COD, you know, I don't feel any of that. You know, oh no, later I... battlefields don't feel any of it. <laughs> Playing that, I just solo queued and played mostly headquarters and mm-hmm. i would run the lobbies by myself yeah uh, my, my teammates are like you said worrying about their kd and hiding and not getting in the headquarters you know they're not worried about winning the game they're just worried about up in their kill death ratio yeah. and i'm just running around i'm always on top i may have the most deaths but i also have the most kills and the most headquarter points right but yeah. since you're, you're speaking of uh battlefield i don't know if you've um seen any clips but there's this grandpa that plays battlefield yeah and he was a sniper in a war i don't remember what war he was in and he just basically translates what he (laughs) went through into this game like there's one clip i saw he's like looking at these people at the building he's like where are they and like all right and he's like looking at this book off screen He, he looks back aims and just headshot yeah and they're like hundreds and hundreds of meters away uh, this this <laughs> a lot of the comments are like this guy doesn't have ptsd he has nostalgia <laughs> right like, that's why it's like oh my god uh Man. but yeah battlefield grandpa huh we got a yeah we got a skyrim grandma and a battlefield grandpa mm-hmm. that's crazy um yeah 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 i i don't know if they'll ever be a competitive multiplayer i've i tried Battlefront is kind of fun if they didn't like mess it up as much as they did. Uh, that's kind of fun, but mostly because it's kind of funny the way you die. And it's like they make all the, especially when you're a stormtrooper, they make all the noises. Ah, and, you know, the ATA or <laughs> at or whatever you want to call it is just blasting people. And it's kind of fun, but right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I said, let's, let's, let's hop into the topics here. Um, sure. I can go first, try to see if we can try to knock mine out some decent speed here is a little bit of a labyrinth but i think we can get it so recently the borderlands trailer borderlands the movie based off of borderlands the game by gearbox recently came out it's got a bunch of people in it kevin hart jamie lee curtis uh bobby lee a bunch of other people um 
And I don't know how it's going to, I don't know really how it's going to be. The trailer looks okay. Um, but it got me thinking about, about video game movies. We've kind of talked about video game movies before. Um, but I wanted to kind of examine, kind of get our own little list of, let's say like our, maybe our three favorite video game movies. Okay. And let's do maybe like our, maybe let's do like our two least favorite. Let's try to like even it up here. So like our three favorite, maybe our two that we, that we dislike the most. And then I want us to maybe kind of pitch the people a movie idea based off of a video, a video game that we've played. Okay. So I'll, I'll go first with, uh, I'll go first with one that I hate because it's very, it's hard to love them. There's not a lot of them to love. But there's plenty of them to hate. And the one that I hate uh, <laughs> that I'll, I'll list of the one of the two, I don't know if I've mentioned it before, the Assassin's Creed movie that was supposed to have been great. Mm-hmm. Had Michael, Michael Fassbender, um, a, a bunch of them trying to think, was it Michael? I can't forget. I can't remember. Any, I can't remember his name, but he played Omar uh, from uh, from the, um, the Wire and a bunch of other people in it. It's supposed to be it was supposed to have been great and it ended up being terrible. Um, unmotivated. It looked dour. Uh, Michael Fassbender was not charismatic in it at all. Um, and the way it explored the animus as far as like what you did in real life and then how it transferred you to the past, I could see where they were trying to go, but it just didn't really end up working as, as as well because in the game the animus is basically it's basically an MRI machine right you just hop into it and you scans you go hey you go back and in the movie they tried to make it where it's this I don't know it's this it's this robot arm that kind of plugs into you and then as you're transported to the past you're however you're acting and moving in real life this is how you're moving in the history in the history memory or whatever that you're existing in so that way, like your character is doing something while they're in the past. I understand it from a narrative standpoint because it's not interesting for the audience to watch someone lay in an MRI for several hours. Right. right. So I got to, we got to have them doing something. But just how they tried to make those narratives marry each other just didn't work well. The characters weren't that intriguing. The plot wasn't that great. Um, and it, it just didn't work out at all. It had a, they did a, they did a sequel tease that would that was not earned and was terrible. Um, I mean the the way that the Templars are represented is like typical, like oh, secret society, blah blah blah, dra- draconian in some sorts. Uh, which I guess I don't know. That's kind of how they're represented in the game a little bit, but it, I don't know, man. There, there was so many other things they could have did to make that movie better. And Assassin's Creed on its own is a action game based on history and conspiracies. It would seem like it would be a layup. There's so many things you could do working in regards to like the Templars and what the assassins are and and different things like that. Um, I didn't like, and this kind of goes again to like some of the things, some of the critiques I've had of the game. We're talking about the assassins. There's no, mention of the original Hashashins, uh the the uh predominantly I believe they were uh um um were originally originated the Muslim fighters of which that kind of were birthed during the Crusades. Like it, it doesn't explore the origin of it at all and instead just makes Michael Fosbender a Spanish a Spanish uh assassin during I think the 14 or 1500s. That's his history character. And then his modern character, I forgot if he's like a thief or something. Some absolutely all of it's generic. It's the most generic stuff ever, uh, and it could it could have been so much better. So I hate it because of that. Because I feel like, and I don't feel like I know that that movie killed that franchise from being a movie franchise. It killed it. It's dead. Right. If they, if they try to make another Assassin's Creed movie, it's going to be twenty twenty five years from now. Right. <laughs> like they like they killed that. As they a, need, as they a, need this one to just dis- disappear. They first. killed it. Just like. And I guess Ubisoft loves to do it, right? You, I can't believe if Disney was part of it, but several years ago when they had uh, Prince of Persia, the Prince of Persia was Jake Gyllenhaal. Mm-hmm. You're killing your stuff. What are yep. you doing? These are obviously bad plays. Come on, man. The Prince of Persia is Jake Gyllenhaal. Of everyone, it's Jake Gyllenhaal. 
<laughs> he should have just made it Matthew McConaughey. I mean, what are we right? doing? Right? It's only kind of white, right? It's, it's uh, insane. That's my list. Number one, this number one for, for, for most hated, though, is Assassin's Creed. I don't know what my most hated one is. Mm-hmm. So I will start with one of the ones that I do like. Okay. And one of my favorite ones is, I'll, they'll do both of them just because it, it's like a series, mm-hmm. is the Silent Hill series. Okay. Now, I tried to play the games, and I did not do too well. So I did not get far into all of them or anything like that. So I don't know the exact storyline in the games. Yeah. But in the movies, I feel they did a very good job. And I, as soon as I saw the first one, I was like, I cannot wait for this second one to come out. Now, I know from most of the fans, the second one wasn't uh, that great. But I still enjoyed it. Yeah. So, who knows? For all I'm saying, you know, I like I love Avatar, and then Shyamalan released that movie, and it's the most horrible thing. But people who never watched that, uh, the the show, they're like, "Oh, that yeah. was all right." I'm like, like, yeah, yeah well, it you have even... no idea. It's 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 incredible how much that movie doesn't get the show. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't get it. Like I thought about having like trying to go back and like rewatch it because it's such a it's just it's themes and how it explores it is just so mature, even though it's an anime. People think it's younger. Like, it's so great. Um, yeah. And that movie is just terrible. So bad. all around terrible. I almost shaved my head for that movie. Yeah. And I'm glad I didn't. Well, you know, it took well, it didn't take quite 20 years. They got another one coming up. This one looks like it might be better. It is already messed up. Yeah. Here's the thing. Yeah. I say it might, it might, it looks like it's going to be better. That doesn't mean it's going to be good. If you're better than the Touché. last Airbender, if you're if you're better than you're... the last Airbender, you're still pretty bad, right? Because <laughs> from from what I hear, they don't want to uh, put a lot of conflict out. So apparently, they're getting rid of the entire. There's no war in Boston, say. Really? Yeah. So we'll see. It could just be a you know a rumor to not let the show do well. Yeah. It's but true. like apparently they're getting rid of a lot of like conflict mm. things in it, which is what the show's about. That's what the show's about. Yeah. But okay, uh, enough uh, off rambling. What uh what's what's the next one you got for us? Okay, so I'm gonna go with another one that I don't like. Okay. And that one is one movie that. <laughs> it's just it's just I don't I don't I don't I I haven't heard of really that many people that like this movie at all. And you know what? It's a tie. I'm gonna say tie Ooh, because they're okay, both the same okay. movie. And that is the Street Fighter slash Dead or Alive movie. Okay. If you want to make the argument that Dead Ooh. or Alive is worse, yes, Dead or Alive is worse. <laughs> uh but but they're both terrible movies. The 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 cheesiness doesn't work for it. It doesn't work for the type of stories that I think those games are loosely trying to tell. Um, right. And like it, it. There's another game that's one of the one. Oh, there's another movie that's one of the three that I like that I think is also cheesy but does it better. I'll talk about that. I think it's pretty obvious, but we'll talk about it. Besides that, though, <laughs> yeah, those those two movies, and yeah, for sure, I would say Dead or Alive is probably the worst of those two. Um, cheesy, over the top. I mean, it's all we're talking what nineties. 2000s type of action which is like just not that great you know um there's a reason why the matrix is held up as a standard during that era because everything goes from action wise but absolutely terrible um so so terrible that if people don't remember there's a movie called taken that exists where they let like a 50 year old seven foot lanky guy be an action star because that's how bad action was filmed and was back then. <laughs> so yeah, all those all both those movies absolutely suck. They're terrible. The way that the characters are represented, um there's some fair representation, but a lot or interpretations, but a lot of it just kind of misses. Um, and they're just terrible. Tonally, they're terrible. It, 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 they're just annoying. I, I get annoyed just thinking about those movies. So I, I put those as my tie. If I have to pick one or the other, 
It's dead or alive. Um, I think I, <laughs> I think I think I, I hate dead or alive. I hate Assassin's Creed more because I care about that franchise more. Mm -hmm. But as far as just movie quality, dead or alive takes it. It, it takes it. All right. Um, I'm probably going to get flack for this one. Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> I've watched it multiple times. It's not the worst movie, but unfortunately, I have not watched a lot of video game movies because mm -hmm. I never played the video games for them. Gotcha. So I was never interested in them. Mm -hmm. And I know this is a very dated movie, but I still feel like it could have been done better at the time. And it's the Mario movie. The Mar Are we talking about the original Mario? The movie? original with the, one the with pest dude. With, with John Leguizamo and Alyssa Milano, like that whole thing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 100% agreed. 100% agreed. It, I don't, I don't know. I just, I, I get it. Whatever, but it, there's, I don't know. I, that's just how I feel. Yeah, it's weird. I would say generally just weird, weird premise. Obviously, the premise is weird. The casting makes it weird too. Like John Leguizamo as Mar as Mario, even back then, doesn't make sense. Well, he was Luigi. Was he Luigi? He was Luigi. Who was Mario yeah, but, then? Uh, it was a thicker dude. <laughs> yeah, I remember there was a... Uh, but they don't even look like brothers. They don't. They don't look related at all. One was very white and one was very Latino looking. Yeah. Bob Hoskins was Mario. Yeah, John Leguizamo was Luigi. Yeah. And then but Dennis then, like, Hopper was Bowser. All the, all the costumes and stuff, like, it was Nintendo. It yeah. It looks real bad. Like what were those? What were those big tall things? What were those supposed to be? Uh, I forget. Like they were like in trench coats with the little heads. Yeah, what were they? Those weren't supposed to be the um. Oh man, I forgot what they're called. Were those the um, other turtle people. Yeah, kind of something like that. Like what? Not not even close. Yeah, it's terrible. It's an all around terrible movie. It's not just a bad video game movie. It's just a bad movie. Uh, Koopas, right? They're supposed to be. Are they supposed Koopas. to be Koopas? I believe. I believe so. I don't remember. Yeah, it's so bad. It is really bad. That almost made my list, but those right. fighting like, movies like, are terrible. But yeah, I could sit there and watch it and not complain that it's on. Mm -hmm. But I would not watch it in my own free time on purpose. Yeah, I mean, I also I feel like part of it's because it's it's 1993. There's nostalgia. I'll watch a 1993 movie. Heck, why not? There was way worse <laughs> stuff that's, that existed then and that it came in now. I'll watch a movie from 1993. Why not? Right. It's dumb. I gotta have some fun with it. Whatever. But it's stupid. Um, yeah, that's a great choice. That's for your that's for your Surprise. dislike. That's one of your dislikes, right? Yeah. Okay. So I, I did all my dislikes. So now I gotta do my likes, which is gonna be a very weird, interesting list. The first it's one though. Hard. Yeah, because there's like, a I'm lot of them are terrible. And it's just a lot of them are terrible. The first uh movie that I'm going to list, I think might be one that flashes people mind. It should. It's great. And that is there's two of them. I'm gonna just name one within the series, I guess. That's gonna be Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Ooh. The Mortal Kombat oh, movies in the nineties. The great, right? They don't have as much of the cheesiness of those other those games. Are so good. The, the fight choreography is fantastic. It is. Uh, the way the villains and the characters are interpreted and portrayed is is grounded enough for what that movie needs. Yeah, um, very and, characteristic of the characters in the game. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's just a, it's just a great time. Again, it's a bit of nostalgia, but it's good nostalgia. I can sit back and I can watch some great martial arts, some great things happening. Right. Um, it's 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 cool. It's it, it's really great. I can watch. Yeah. You know. Johnny Cage and Jax and Liu Kang and all those guys and Raiden was especially in the first one. Raiden was so freaking cool. Mm -hmm. Epis I mean, uh, second movie Raiden, not so much. First movie Raiden was the <laughs> coolest dude ever. Um, and so yeah, I, I put my I put a uh, Mortal Kombat up there uh, as as one of my favorite video game movies. 
Okay. I'll I'll uh, add on to that one. Yeah. My number one most liked video game movie is actually the first Mortal Kombat. Yeah. So we got Annihilation and the original on there. There we go. It it they are like you said they're just so good. The the costumes are pretty spot on for what they were in the video games. Yeah. You know, and the character building, you know, made sense. You know, we had to, you know, find out why, you know, Jax had metal arms and stuff like that. We get we had to see why Johnny was so cocky <laughs> and why Sonya knew so much martial arts and stuff. Like it yeah. it kind of like all made sense and the sets that they had, you know, the stuff looked like it belonged there. Yeah, 100%. Nothing, yeah. Nothing was too like that. I mean, that doesn't even look like anything. Like even like the Nether Realms and stuff, it was all like destroyed and kind of like on fire and yeah. So good. I mean, he, you remember, I think it was in the first one. You remember when um I can't remember if it was when Liu Kang first runs into Scorpion. And we're like, oh, this is going to be this is going to be cool. And they start fighting and whatever. And we're like, and every, I, I'm, I'm just kind of speaking what I think the general anticipation was. We're like, are we going to see it? Are we going to see it? Are we going to see it? And then you see him hold up the hand and you see the slit happen in a little thing. And then you yeah, hear that was, like, get over here. It's, that was Johnny Cage. It was in the woods. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, oh, God. It's so great. It's such a great moment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I uh, love that scene. It, yeah, it was, oh, God, it was so great. Um, so I think well, I'll explore this later to see if I can actually do it because I think that I may want to make an addendum, uh, so or an edit, I should say. So, okay, okay, again, it's a, it's a lot of bad video game movies out here, and so even, true. even the ones that I'm saying I enjoyed more, I'm not saying they're great, I'm just saying it is what it is. Um, here's 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 one that I feel really good about. I really enjoyed the first Sonic the Hedgehog movie of the newer yes. ones that they did. Yes, I really enjoyed the first one. I, I I I you know we had the whole. I remember there was a whole thing online when they first showed previews, and they were like, "Here's Sonic," and the. The, Dude, the video game never, community collectively gasped and said, never oh, have, has anyone seen any bullying as big as that community for telling them to fix Sonic? It's just the gaming community just said collectively, F off. No, you've got to fix this. <laughs> and to their credit, right, to the director's they credit, did. because they oh, did an the amazing They job. have a lot of hubris. They have a lot of ego. To their credit, they were like, we're going to go back and we're going to fix it for the movie. And they went back and fixed it and it, it, it worked. It served great because the new assignment looks yeah. awesome. Yeah. So it, um, the movie did very well. It did very well. It's a, it's a fun movie. It's like a fun movie. You can take your family to, um, you know, you that get was to actually see the very first movie I brought Zayden to see. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was, it was great. It's just a nice, fun, nice, fun family thing to go to. Um, and again, Sonic, I think, is portrayed pretty well. I think the characters do what they have to do. Um, Jim Carrey is Mr. Robotnik. I mean, come on, icon, legendary. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. it, it's, yeah, it's just, it's a it's a great video game movie. And so I, I put that up there. Not as memorable for me as a Mortal Kombat Annihilation, obviously, but it's one of the better video game movies I've seen. Right. I'm glad you said that because I was having a hard time of putting that up there. Yeah. So, I mean, I could, you know, just backpedal, not backpedal, but back up and say what you did. And you're like, hey, you know what? I agree with that one. That was my next one. But uh, I'm going to veer off and say my other one that I disliked. And I feel like I kind of have to choose one of these because. I don't know. I feel obligated. So out of everything Resident Evil, mm -hmm. I would have to say the uh, the second movie with uh, Nemesis in it. Yeah. For some reason, I cannot remember the name of it right now. I am okay. drawing a blank. But for the most part, he was like what Nemesis is in the game. But like that ending... 
Are you kidding me? <laughs> He's going to have some humanity in him? Yeah. No. If if you're going to find humanity in any of these things, it might be a zombie. But he is so far biologically engineered, that should never, ever happen. <laughs> and, uh, the, uh, yeah, sure, they had they had Jill in the movie, mm-hmm. but she wasn't even the most important part. Yeah. I, out of those original seven, the second one I probably like the least. Yeah. So I... I have to go with that one, and also because I haven't seen any other video game movies, really. Hey, it's all fair. Yeah. Um, I, again, like you were saying, I haven't watched a lot of these either. So I know, I mean, this third one I'm going to do is based on the fact that I saw it. Um, and I'm sure there's other ones. I'm sure there's other ones. I'm sure there's, you know, people might watch it and say, hey, how come no one could say Detective Pikachu? Is one of the great ones. Well, for one, I mean, you know, Pikachu's voiced by Deadpool. That's weird to me. That's, uh, <laughs> no, I never did watch that one. Yeah, I didn't watch that one. But one that I did watch, which again, I'm not saying is great, but I thought it was I for what it was. Mm-hmm. That's Rampage. Dude. Starring Dwayne The Rock yeah. Johnson. Came that... out in 2018. I thought it, it was wasn't good. half bad wasn't half bad it was i kind of liked where it was going the action i mean you know it was all it was all pretty pretty predictable but still you know it was it was nice nice action schlock that we need and to use you know what the, what the premise of rampage is and in order to make a pretty decent schlock action movie with a good with a big action star i think it did what it needed to do very well so i put rampage up there as my third and final kind of like hey this is my top three video game movies. Yeah, I I agree. I actually watched that pretty recently. Yeah. So it's not like, oh yeah, you know it was good because I played the games, but like I I haven't played that game in years. You know, it mm-hmm. was on the, the original PlayStation, and that's probably about the last time I played it. So seeing it and doing, it, I'm like, you know what, they did that pretty well. Yeah. Okay. So I've I've thought about it and I'm probably going to stick to my guns and go with it. But I guess we'll we'll put this for number 3. Okay. And I'm not going to say Resident Evil because I still feel like they can do better. I did like most all the movies except number 2 the least. There's there's room for improvement there. Okay. If they do it like they did with the two original Mortal Kombat movies, number one instantly. But this isn't number one. It'll be, it'll be my number three liked top pick. But I did like the uh, original Tomb Raider movies. They weren't oh, half bad. The, um, the Angelina Jolie ones. Yes. Those were kind of fun. Now, yeah, it was kind of fun. I, I played the games at that age. I yeah. watched the movies when they came out. So whatever age I was, mm-hmm. they captured it pretty well. She went on an adventure. She had to do all these obstacles and take care of the bad guys. Tit for tat, you know? So I'm, I'll, I'll go with that one. That's nice. That's a good one. That's a, that's a, I feel like that's a, a, a somewhat of a deep cut. I like that. Um. I was going to say it. I'm surprised. I was going to say again, my, my my two that I dislike are firmly in that. Um, if I was going to, if I can add, if I can do an honorable mention or an OLI and outside looking in, yeah, uh, on those hated ones, um, Blood Rain by U Bowl is terrible. Uh, and so that could go up there because I actually kind of liked Blood Rain as a as a game franchise, at least the first one, mm-hmm. I actually really enjoyed it. So he came along and butchered movies as he does, right? He did that with Blood Rain. He did that with the original House of the Dead. Um, it's, you know, that's up there. You know, it's funny you say that because of what Shyamalan did to the Avatar movie. Mm-hmm. I promised myself I will never watch one of his movies again. Really? And I haven't. Like, I know 
Split is good or whatever it is. The one with the guy that plays Xavier when he's younger. Mm-hmm. I haven't watched it. I know. I yeah. think, I'm pretty sure he made that trilogy of movies, whatever. Like, I know. Screw you. All right. Yeah, I would say that his recent movies have gotten better, but they aren't missing anything. It's not like he's made something that's completely like, oh, wow, this is like incredible. You know, um, they're just OK. So, I mean, hey, that's fair. That's 100 percent fair. You ruin something that's like a like really important to 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 someone, you know they don't want to dig the rest of your stuff. Sticking my guns on that one, but since you did do an honorable mention, I do want to do an honorable mention as well, and it's not from a particular game, mm-hmm. but um, Ready Player One, mm. I believe is what it's called, right? Yeah. Let me, yeah. So I think that is a very good movie. Okay. And it it just it takes from a bunch of different video games. You know, the movie itself is based on its own video game, mm-hmm. and it, it talks about like Easter eggs, and you know the community. You have your little little pod of people, and right. there's multiple different things to do, and there ends up doing, being this really bad guy trying to take over everything. I just think they 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 did that very well, you know. Yeah. And it has little cameos from a bunch of games that we know. It has the Turtles, right. has some Star Wars stuff. It has Tracer from Overwatch. It, you know, it has the Iron Giant. Yeah, I think I mean, that's Spielberg, right? He did that, right? I think that's Steven Spielberg movie. Maybe. Yeah. And but it's fair, fair if it's you know, yeah, Steven Spielberg. Spielberg. Yeah, have some quality. Yeah. Came out in 2018. Wow. Took mm-hmm. me quite a few years to watch it because I think I watched it for the first time just a, just above two years ago. Oh, really? 2018. So it tried to compete with Rampage. Well, probably. And completely but destroyed yeah. it. Yeah, I, uh, that's, that's, I liked it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, there's, there's, so. We've got the uh, basically did three that we that we like three that we dislike. Now we got to pitch our own idea based off a of video game. Um, and so I have an Tricky. idea. Ooh, I have what an is idea. it? It's nothing intricate. I just think it'd be a nice, cool, actiony, schlocky type of game, uh, uh, movie. So in addition to it recently being that um, you know Borderlands is coming out, the last video game movie I believe that came out was Gran Turismo, which looks like a terrible movie. I want to take, I want to create a a video game movie based off of a different game dealing with cars. And that game is Rocket League. Oh, I think it would be that could be very interesting to have a Rocket League movie, right? Because not only do you have to have skill with the car, you got to have a little bit of like a soccer element to it, too. There's sports. So you have car and sports colliding. Obviously, people would. Like if you it'd be it would be believable and somewhat grounded that people would go to a coliseum or an arena to watch that. Mm-hmm. And there's so many different things you can do with it, and obviously it can be you know, you know, you you put it in the tone of something like a Kingsman. You know what I'm saying? Some lower class, you know, uh, a British cat trying to come up, trying to trying to pull his his family up, and he has a knack to be able to do these type of things. Maybe he's known as like. A drifter, you know, he drifts cars around and gets in trouble and all that stuff. And then someone, you know, and then someone else British pops up and says, you know, oi, I think, you know, uh, uh, oi, you should, you should try to put that to better use, I. Eh? And he like, oh, you mean? And they show him the whole thing, and he joins Rocket League and works his way up. And then obviously you have the privileged kid. You gotta, you gotta always have a Draco Malfoy in these. Oh, movies. for sure, he has, he has top notch car yeah. and. Yeah. So, out. so instead of calling him Draco Malfoy, I want to call him Mako Dralfoy. So you got Mako Dralfoy. <laughs> and he's up there. does all the driving. Exactly. He's like, you can't be a rice. A rice is for those that was born to rice. And he's like, oh, I'm going to. You're, you're really on point with that uh, Thank accent you. There. I appreciate it. Like, Oi, I'm going to bring my family up oh, from, 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 from underneath this uh, uh, rags to riches, you know. Oh, if you really think you can do it, you know, and then boom. It, you see the rise. You see them grow, have respect for each other, and they got to beat the other team that's undefeated. And sometimes maybe they put something in the ball that makes it hit harder. So it's like, boom, oi, 
he, oi, it wrecked my, it, <laughs> it wrecked me Fender. You know what I'm saying? And it's me gotta, Fender, no. <laughs> it's wrecked me Fender, no. Oh, and my you gotta God. you got to do some stuff like that. I think it'd be a really cool, a nice, cool, everybody go, watch a little bit of schlocky action, not have to think for maybe an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, but right. I think Rocket League would be great. Dang, that, I mean, that is a great choice. That's my pitch. That's my pitch. See, now, I can't use my pitch because it already is a thing, per se. I mean, it's a TV show now, Twisted Metal, which, by the okay. way, I, I'm i all behind. The first season was really great. Apparently, a season two's coming. Yeah. Also, can't do The Last of Us because they have a TV show. Amazing, by the way. Can't complain at all. I'm running out of options back here, you know? But I feel like a little meshing, because it is from the same universe, a Titanfall slash Apexy type movie, right? 100%. Because there, there's a lot of lore there. 100%. You know, like even, you know, just from the Titanfall games, there wasn't too much of story mode in the second one. There was, it was like a multiplayer story mode, whatever it had. Mm-hmm. But like, there's there's a lot there. And mm-hmm. a lot of uh, Apex stuff is taken from that. Like one of the characters, Valkyrie, her dad was one of the main pilots mm-hmm. in Titanfall. Yeah. You know, and, so I feel like. Pilots are so awesome. It, agreed. It like, reminds, like, yeah. Just a little bit, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. But they just kind of have to do it right because if mm-hmm. they pull a street fighter or dead or alive or you know even even resident evil just because they make it look good and make it do well doesn't mean it's doing par for the course for the franchise right yeah i i think that's a great idea um titanfall is a is a world and a universe that i would love to be explored more the pilots, I can't and I cannot articulate well enough for how often how awesome pilots are. The idea of these pilots. When you hear like pilots, you hear the Titans, you're thinking, oh, these are people that just they just weaponize, they just run the mechs. And it's like, like no, pilots are the most elite of soldiers. And right. they happen to man and they happen to man these mechanized machines. So, you know, it's like it's like, hey, like this is someone that that can run the the most dangerous mechanized thing in the world and then when you take them out of it they're master chief like it's it, it, i was literally gonna use that comparison yeah it's like it's like they're incredible so like examining the training they go through in the psyche and how the titans work and like again in, in titanfall 2 titanfall 2 from a story standpoint explores the connection and relationship that pilots have with their titans that's a whole nother element that you can kind of explore in this world and then explore the apex legends which basically are like if i'm remembering correctly they're essentially like pilots or i mean not pilots like pirates or rogues within the titanfall world like they're not like they're not like the the soldiers they're kind of like the the rogues i guess in that world so, uh some of them i think uh octane is roguelike i know uh newcastle and whatever why can i not think of her name Bangalore, there we go. Their family, because they're brother and sister, their mm-hmm. family has been in the armies growing up like they're in, for generations. Yeah. So, you know, they've been in the wars and stuff like that. So they're not rogue. But yeah, like uh, there's like Fuse and Maggie, they're from uh, a different planet from whatever the main planet is. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's so much. Yeah, like the like the Apex Legends would be in theory the antagonist to the pilots and whatever faction that is, I believe in theory. Possibly. Yeah. Or you play off, because I know in Titanfall 2, you were having to like fight some of the Apex Legends. So in theory, they can kind of be maybe antagonists, but also kind right. of not be. And right. You can play with that because nothing's really, that's the other thing about that universe. Nothing's really set as being good and just good and just bad. It plays a little bit with the complexity of morality, so right. it would, yeah, it'd be it'd be great as a movie. Yeah, because like I know, for example, uh, Mirage's mother, she's the one that uh, created the uh, 
invisible technology that they used. Mm -hmm. So they they would be an asset to them. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, but for sure, there's there's a little bit of everything in there. That's a great that's a great pitch. I think those are two movies they should make right Dude, away. I I would definitely watch yours. I'm, I'm telling you, and, and, and they got to be. Here's the thing, though. For it to stick, they got to be British. They, they got to be <laughs> British. That's the only way to make it right. Uh, I mean, it did, it did, it did do well when you were yeah. saying it. Spice it up. Maybe we can write a script after this. Yeah, write a script and pitch it. Hey, yeah. here's my. Go to whatever. What is it? Psionics, I think, is the developer of Rocket League. And I say, hey, you know what? Look. There's all these other companies out here making movies. They made a freaking Uncharted movie. They made an Uncharted movie and, and casted freaking Spider-Man as Nathan Drake. You guys can do anything. No one cares. There's no, no rules to no this. No one cares. <laughs> they, cast, uh, they cast Spider-Man as Nathan Drake and Marky Mark as, uh, as his mentor. I forgot the guy's name. Yeah, I thought that was a weird combo. It, it's a weird combo. It, it, there's no rules to this. You can do whatever. All right, well, uh, I guess we can skitty all battle to mine, right? Yeah. All right, so mine is we, we have sports, right? Mm-hmm. Now, there's stadiums in every major city across this country and other countries as well for other sports that are way more popular than where they are here. But, you know, we got the football stadiums, hockey stadiums, basketball stadiums, baseball stadiums. Some of them are kind of overlapping. Mm-hmm. I know this. But uh, eSports. Now, they don't really have much. You know, uh, I, they use stuff that's already there. I haven't heard of them building their own stadium for specifically eSports. But I do know, like... The only esports that I've watched myself has been the Overwatch League. And, you know, they had a crowd. It was a couple hundred people there. Mm-hmm. And that's cool. But do you see esports getting big to maybe not getting their own stadiums, but maybe using the big stadiums that we already have and just adding more screens or something and becoming big and having huge amount of fans coming and watching them live instead of watching them over streaming like many of us do. Oh, uh, I think it could potentially get, I don't know if it'll ever get to like arena size or stadium size. Right. But um, I could see like right now I would think about if there's like an e-sports team that's designated for maybe a city or something like that, I could see them, filling up kind of maybe not filling up but but putting decent amount of seats of, of people in seats for like these auxiliary gyms or something i'm thinking about of of is like the idea of so i know here and and i don't know anything for sure about location size or anything like that but i know here in michigan in the metro detroit area downtown detroit there's a place called replay cafe mm-hmm. which is basically like a barcade right um, so they have, you can go there, you can they have a bunch of games you can play. I would like to see them maybe do stuff like, Hey, like we can sponsor like events or matches in this space and you can come see us play because I think like what esports can get there. If it starts to make like, like to put in work, to make that an expectation of people that follow the sport. Like, hey, you can actually go to a place. You can watch them on stream. It's easy. But wouldn't it be cool to go to a place that maybe sits two, three, four hundred people and watch a couple of esports teams go at it? And like, you know, in this area, like you think of a place that can maybe support something like a LAN. If you can do something like that, you can probably host an esporting event. I would right. Think. Um. So I, I, I would think that's like maybe the way you you start to get it going. Um. Because I also think of something like. So, like for instance, like soccer, much larger, obviously mm-hmm. than than esports, but it's still it's still even now trying to gain a foothold in I guess the 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 Western American zeitgeist in regards to like what we think of as sports. 
And though it's not huge here in Detroit, FC Detroit has a fervent fan base that grows year in over year. And so they have their own little space, but they're starting to get more people in it. They're starting to, it's starting to have a better attendance and pretty soon they'll be in a, in a spot where they can, you know, facilitate playing in a bigger area. Right. And so I feel like esports teams can have to start doing that. They have to start saying, Hey, come watch us play, come have, you know, have some kind of like, not only some kind of tie, I guess, regionally to area besides just what the game is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's kind mm-hmm. of important to be able to build that. Um, how exactly they go about it, I'm not 100% sure, but right. I feel like that's something that they've got to do because or else you're just, you're kind of depending on people watching these teams for the players. And unless you actually like the player, there's no real other draw to it. So I kind of think about it like the NBA, like, like the NBA is mostly just players. People aren't really drawn too much. I mean, they have some allegiance to their team. But if you think about basketball, like there's one player, Giannis Antetokounmpo, right? One of the great basketball players in the game, right? He plays for the Milwaukee Bucks. Well, part of the reason why people like him, they may be interested in him as a player, but there's a lot more buy into it because he represents Milwaukee. He's on the Milwaukee Bucks. So there's a little bit more of something tied into him there. You know, so I feel like right. that's, maybe the route you have to go and then also just trying to get celebrities like, like bigger names attached to it streamers to like show up to events and stuff like that. Like um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I re- like the reason I know who cloud nine gaming either is or once was is because of shroud. Right? right. So like g- getting those bigger names and stuff that's attached to it, and and kind of building it up that way. You need those people to be around, and they need to be able to stay a decent amount of time to build the traction, and 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 get the investment from people. And then you can you, you can kind of build from there, you know. Yeah, uh, I pretty much agree with you. Um, I don't unfortunately see him ever being the size of a, a NFL stadium. No, you know, because that's you know that's what thirty thousand people easy. Right, but like. If, uh, you know, for example, like you're saying around here, you know, if we could fill up the uh, Fox, is it, you know, has all those mm-hmm. nice, it's a very steep seats, you know, it fits a couple hundred people. Yeah, like a, like a know, six it, to eight hundred seat theater or something. Like yeah, that. you know, if, yeah. if they had one of those in every major city, uh, it had the teams had bigger people, you know, at least one on every team, because, you know, depending on what game they're playing, you know, there's different size teams and, you know, different games, different people, different everything. So there could be a Detroit team, but there's the Detroit team for League of Legends and the Detroit team for Apex and the Detroit team for this game and that game. And Mm -hmm. it's it's all going to be the same team. You know, it's not going to be the Lions and the Tigers and the Red Wings, you know, like there's a completely different sports. This is the same sport, just, you know, different type of game, mm-hmm. which I guess, you know, is what makes them all different. But whatever, it's it's not going to get big enough for its own specific game. Right. That's going to make it even that's going to make it 10 times harder, 100 times harder. Right. But and there's. There's also like the monetization issue of it as well, right? Because like we talked about, I don't know, I I can't remember the amount, the exact amount of seats like Little Caesar Arena has. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's say it's like thirty. Let's just say for argument, say it's thirty thousand, right? Um, they're able to monetize thirty thousand people going to see a Pistons game, which why would you, right? Um, over thirty thousand people viewing a uh some kind of you know esports event right Right. and that's not to say they can't pull like those numbers because again we mentioned people like shroud or if you want to go like older streamers like tim the tatman or dr disrespect they want to average pull 20 to thirty thousand people a stream right so the amount of people that are going to see the pistons play well now it's way less because they suck but the average amount of people that would go to see the pistons play or go see the red wings play 
they're watching these streamers play Warzone or Overwatch or Fortnite. Like they're still pulling the same numbers, but the the monetization is different. If 30,000 people go to see the Wings play, that's 30,000 people at easily X amount of dollars, right? Mm-hmm. Where if 30 people tune 30,000 people tune in to see Tim the Tatman play on Twitch or on YouTube, it's not however many dollars per the per that person. They're just there and they can donate if they want to. Right. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that's where you get into a little bit of difference because I feel like if there was if there was a way more of a of a monetary way to make sure that they could be that the things could match up, you could probably more sustain those. Because right. and, and that's why it's like, hey. If we don't, we, we're not going to be able to fill a three thousand or thirty thousand dollars seat arena. But if we can get six to eight hundred people to come in at twenty bucks a ticket, that equals X amount of dollars. That may be able to help compensate everyone and help further, uh, you know, help help us invest more money into building up the team and the brand and all that stuff. Right. And then I was thinking, you know, that obviously they'll probably have you know merchandise and some sort of jersey or whatever for mm-hmm. you know the the team players and stuff like that and i think that would help a lot but yeah i think i think we're pretty set on you know a couple hundred seated venue and you know if they had enough teams in enough cities they'll have the, you know the home games away games stuff like that I, I i think it could get there with the right monetization yeah i think one thing that needs to happen and I don't, I mean, I don't 100% enjoy it, but I do think there needs to be an NC, like almost like an NCAA ish type of thing that happens. Like there needs to be a singular regulatory, ex- like executable community or, or, or co- company or something that is able to streamline and more coordinate these events. Because, you know, the fighting games are kind of like done by a bunch of other people. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, games like League of Legends or Dota are done by a bunch of other different people. Mm -hmm. Overwatch done by a bunch of other different people. And I feel like if we could like kind of coordinate these things, I think, I think, like you kind of like what you were saying, I think they all kind of view them as being separate sports. Mm -hmm. If you're inside that community and they're not, they're all esports. So, like, you know, professional football is regulated by one professional football body, typically. There, there are maybe right. a couple of other leagues, but, but typically the professional one is managed by this one. And then there's other semi-professional ones that may be managed by a different thing. But, like, you know, even, mm-hmm. like, even like the AFL and the XFL even came together to create more than one thing. It just makes more sense. So I feel like there needs to be kind of a coming together in that area to make sure these things make more sense and they can kind of build in unison towards making esports a thing. And there's a lot of right. money in esports and esports is starting to make more money, but I feel like there'd be even more money to be had if there was a cohesive plan towards this is how we're going to make esports bigger and more lucrative together, not just this is how we're going to make the Overwatch League bigger. This is how we're going to make, you know, um competitive and uh, Super Smash Bros bigger. Like it, it needs to be a bit more right. of a concerted effort. And I was just thinking, since there's so many different genres of competitive uh, gaming, there they could easily separate the you know the finales or you know like the Super Bowls of each type of game at different times of the year, mm-hmm. and you know like how football's every you know Sunday or whatever, like you know the fighting games, they'll they'll have those people playing at whatever city, you know, every Thursday, but you know, the first person shooters are going to be on every Tuesday. Like they could have an event literally every single day Mm -hmm. instead of just doing once or twice a week, like the sports do now. Right. Yeah. And it's not going to really, uh, what is that word? It's not really going to overwork people because they're going to be at different genres of of the gaming right you yeah know, and the, and the benefit of it too is that um the the online infrastructure is better than like a lot of these major sports because these major sports again want money at every single point of access and they're big they're lumbering it takes them slower to move um but a lot of people the gaming community is already accustomed to getting their content via twitch or youtube or some way super quick mm-hmm. access is easy Mm-hmm. So I feel like you can use that as a tool, you know. Right, to definitely. Grow. 
All right. Well, there I have it. Yeah. Nice. Very, uh, uh, a very interesting topic, though. It, it's it seems like it seems like there were more esports. It seems like esports has taken a little bit of a dip, but it's still growing overall. Um, yeah, I think like like we've mentioned in other uh, levels, it just hasn't been the nicest, you know, four years. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, it's going to come up. I know that they've done a few esports broadcasts on like ESPN, probably two or Ocho or wherever the heck. You know, but they they've been on major sports networks, is to say. So there's obviously they're so identifying it as yeah. There's obviously an audience for it. You know. Right. Um, that leads us towards the end of the podcast. We're at final thoughts where we can make a final thought about anything that is either related or unrelated to this podcast episode. So, um, I can give a final thought first. Sure. Or if you had one go, but I'll, I'll take this one. I think you did first last time. Um, so my, my final thought is, uh, we were going through, we were going through, we were talking about those movies. And I was looking at a list of movies um, and one that I neither hate nor love. I just wish was better. And we mentioned this actor in a different movie. But that was the Max Payne movie that, ah. starred, that starred the venerable Marky Mark. Mm-hmm. Um, Max Payne is so great. And I heard I, they were doing remasters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like. The gaming community collectively forgets Max Payne. Um, But that's a shame because it's such a great game. The way that they tell the story is great. Max as a character is great. It's all just exceptional. Um, And from the, I think, well, obviously I think Max, I think clearly Max Payne 3 is the worst one. But the first and second one are so great. Their use of like that detective noir for the game. And obviously the bullet time stuff they incorporated into it. That was ahead of its time. Everyone started using it afterwards. Um, it's just great. And I, I remember when that movie came out, I had high hopes that, oh, okay, yeah, this is this is Marky Mark. You know, I can't remember if this was before or after The Departed that came out. Um, if it was after, let's see here. Let me see if I can. Max Payne came out in 2008. And The Departed, wow. that's right, a long time ago. And The Departed came out in 2006. So this is. This might have been the next movie he made after that. So I came off of The Departed. I'm like, oh, this guy is going to crush. This guy is going to crush. And it was not that good. So, um, and yeah. I made would, $85 million a box office. Yeah. So I would like, we talk about remakes. You know, like you mentioned, remasters. Mm-hmm. I would love a remake of a Max Payne movie. Max Payne is a great character. That world is a very cool and interesting world. It is your typical, I think, like kind of mobster, cop, that whole mix up. But they did it in a really interesting way. And so um, I would love to see that happen again. Yeah. I'm, and he does those kind of movies so well, too. Yeah. It seems like that's what he's always called up for. Yeah, Marky Marky Mark feels like he's hit and miss. Mostly, mostly, mostly hit though, but sometimes he's hit and miss. Now, um, the other thing we talked about, uh, what was the movie I mentioned? Was it two thousand and eight? That's it. Was uh, was um, that was Max Payne. Was Max Payne? Do you know what else was? You said was Departed. Was the Departed? You know what else was the Marky Mark movie in two thousand and eight? Four Brothers. No, which is an, another one that's great. It's another. It's a, I I've watched that movie at least once a year. Yeah. Oh yeah, hundred percent. This, this is same, such a good movie. Same 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 over here. Um, but another movie that came out that had a couple of people that we talked about in video game movies, two thousand and eight is The Happening, which was directed by M Night Shyamalan, starred Mark Wa- Mark Wahlberg, and John Leguizamo was in it. Uh, that's a great terrible movie. If you're someone that 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 loves good bad movies, it's one of the greats. It's one of the greats. Uh, for those of for those of you that haven't seen this movie, that's uh, fourteen years old at least. Um, the the air is lethal. 
I should say, and I should say less the air. I should say the wind. The wind is lethal in that movie. That's all you need to know. Because <laughs> people get killed by the wind. Not a tornado. Not, it's not Twister, which, by the way, another great bad movie from the 90s. It's so not Twister. making another one. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, man. This is no original Comes out ideas. later this year. No original ideas. I say as I want them to remake a movie they made before. That's based off a right? video game. But yeah, um, yeah, really, really, that was a that was a misfire that I wished wasn't one. So make it, make another one, and make and put someone good in it. Don't put freaking not to say that he's bad, he's not bad. Don't put freaking Tom Holland in it, okay? Like yeah, let, let's he, think about it. That's not his forte. It's neither is Uncharted, and they put him in that. I think it's because he was a big money grabbing Spider Man. But yeah. that's that's who he is. Like that's even who he is. Even out of character, like just him being himself. Yeah. He's very close to what Peter Parker is. Yeah, hundred percent. And Spider Man. He's so Peter Parker. He's, makes great, sense. he's great Peter Parker. He may yeah. be my favorite Peter Parker. I know a lot of people are like, oh no, it's what? Toby Maguire. No even though you guys hated Toby Maguire. You said he was too dramatic. I like Tom Tom Tom, Tom Holland's yeah, my favorite Spider Man. I, I never hear people talk great about them they'd say that they're the they're it's his favorite actors toby for the spider-mans but i never hear i hear so many people making fun of him for spider-man 3 yeah oh yeah no one good. no one no one really liked tom toby mcguire's spider-man until uh we got other spider-mans and then it was like oh he's the <laughs> best one that's what everyone does oh uh, this one sucks but well, now we got a new one well this one new one sucks the old one was great oh okay you gotta know, know it's good when you have it. Though. Yeah. Because, like, now that the, the new ones are coming out, they're like, where's Amazing Spider-Man 3? We, we had that right. opportunity that no when one they asked were making for. them, people. Yeah, no one asked for it. Everyone was like, oh, the Amazing, Amazing Spider-Man 2 sucks. And then all of a sudden, you know, get all the Tom Holland ones, and they're all great. And then we're like, we never got Amazing Spider-Man 3 because you said that the second one sucked. You didn't want a third one. <laughs> Why would they make it? Uh, all right, um, my final thought, I'll work off of yours as well. Uh, another one that turned out better than I thought it was going to be, but I'm still kind of upset at him, is the new, the Super Mario Brothers movie, the animated one. Oh, yeah? I'm still upset they used Chris Pratt yeah, I didn't see that one. But it it is what it is. It turned out it wasn't a bad movie just because of the voice actor. Yeah. And what was my other part? Oh, yeah. Also, the new Mortal Kombat movie that came out mm -hmm. was also good. I don't know if you've seen the new one. I didn't see the new one. It. I recommend it. Okay. I don't know if you'll like it as much as the original two. But I I feel like they did well, even though what they did was kind of weird. Hmm. But, but yeah, but also, what you gonna say something? I was gonna say I'll, I'll have to check it out. Yes, I've I've watched it a couple times already. Okay. And also, please for the love of whatever. You pray to, worship to, look into. Give us a decent resume, Evil. Yeah. There's so much money and time and fan base there. there like there... I said before, I've enjoyed everything that's been put out. You know, mm -hmm. I own the original seven movies. I own the new one. Welcome to Raccoon City or whatever. I watched the Netflix series they put out. It's it. They're good for what they are. But what are you doing? That's that that's going to be an IP that they that they I feel like just collectively aren't going to respect. Um, and that um, upsets me, I, especially the older ones. Now, they may they may do different with the newer ones if they do movies of the newer ones, because the newer ones have a different approach that may mm -hmm. demand that they do that. But I feel like that's just going to look at that as like, OK, here's an IP. Let's rabbit and, and milk it for some more cash and we can just you know not really put a lot of thought into it unless the only way that that's going to change 
is if they accidentally put a director or a creative in control of a, of a project that actually cares about the quality of what they're making. Mm-hmm. And then they accidentally make a good Resident Evil thing. That's that's right. when those things are going to have to happen. They're going to accidentally yep. make a good Resident Evil thing. But the good thing is, is that once they make that discovery, I think they'll be okay for a good bit of them. But it's yeah. going to take them stumbling into someone that actually cares about creating a good quality with that IP. We need our Ryan Reynolds of Deadpool to right in the Re- exactly. Re- Resident Evil series get in there. Yeah. You need someone who cares about how that IP and that world is represented and and wants to do a good job and has the space or either has the creati- creativity to do so with the constraints that they have with that project. Because they aren't going to back up the truck for it. They're going to be like, this is what we need to give us. Like, do this, whatever it is. So if they can do something that's kind of like nice and a little contained. I think about... Um, you know, like like those those monsters and stuff. Like they have like the mom, like the mummy and Doctor Jekyll and Mister Mister Hyde. And one of the one of the movies they did was um, the Invisible Man, right? And so like, oh dude, I remember that movie. How they did that movie is it was like obviously they had a lot of constraints. They couldn't go wild with it, but the little bit that they had, they made it work, and it's great. Like it's probably right. of those of those movies they tried to do. It's probably the best one. It's because you gave it to someone that's creative. Someone that wanted to put out quality that respects the IP, and they're like, "This is what we'll do." My last part is not to complain, to appreciate and be thankful for is the Twisted Metal series and the Last of Us series. the The seasons that they have put out so far have been amazing. Surprisingly, mm-hmm. both from Sony, you know, and yeah. I. I can only hope that season two for both are just as good. Yeah. And it's, it's weird enough because even though I would say probably many would probably say that, you know, analyzing and looking at both the last of us is better. I believe that more work is done on the, on the twisted metal side. Like I think there's greater ability being shown on the twisted metal side because the last of us was already great. Mm-hmm. And like you don't have to do much work. I mean, I'm sure Craig Mazin is great. You don't have to do much work to punch up the script of The Last of Us because it's already exceptional. Right. It's already all there. Yeah. Twisted Metal was literally Twisted Metal, just you gotta do some things. Twelve cars, a little yeah. battlefield, and kill each other. Yeah. But now they're setting all the lore up and mm-hmm. looking awesome uh fighting and all this and that and building the characters. Yeah. You're yeah, I mean, you're right, you're right. So I, I I feel like yeah that's that's a good sign you know if only look man I would I would take again not to knock him Craig Mazin can you do the can you do Assassin's Creed can you help me out there <laughs> leave the last of us because it's fine and go help save Assassin's Creed that's what I need um but that means we're at, we're at the end of level ninety eight of the Thoughts and Players podcast if you liked what you heard subscribe to the podcast on your preferred podcast platform like Apple, like Overcast, like Spotify, like YouTube Music, because I guess Google Podcasts is going away, like iHeart and like Amazon and all those other places. You can also like and follow the pod on the socials. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, where we upload video versions of the podcast. Also, if you want to support us, there's two ways you can do so. One, merch. Okay, I hold this up all the time because I have it. Phone. Hello. Phone cases, hats, shirts, merch. That's what it is. Different stuff like that. Um, also, you have a Patreon. Three different tiers, a $2, a $5, and a $7 tier. Each of those with a bunch of different goodies uh, that are being offered there. We'll have um, a Patreon-exclusive Let's Play series beginning. Um, um, I'm doing a, a let's play series on game dev tycoon. I think I've mentioned it maybe a time or here before, but it's an older game. I think it just passed 11 years being published, but you get to create and run your own video game studio, which I feel like is very apropos for our podcast. I will give a heads up to everyone. The sense. protagonist of the series is happened. <laughs> The protagonist of the series is named Black Guy. I will let you guys figure out where that comes from. Okay. Um, and uh, 
uh, and I, I'm enjoying it. So that'll be coming. To, that'll be coming to Patreon pretty soon. If you want to, if you're interested in that, checking that out. Uh, we'll be Patreon. will come to Patreon. Be there for a while before it eventually trickles to our YouTube later on. But by then, there'll be a bunch of other episodes that are on Patreon. So I'm gonna have hoping to have a little bit of a nice let's play series going for a while i'm not sure how many episodes it'll be but i'm assuming it'll be at least a dozen or so so um i'll have that going on there um but that is it that is it for me david is there anything else you'd like to add please all right well thanks for tuning in and we will catch you on the next level